Good morning guys. So this week's video, I don't really know how I want to take it. I kind of wanted just to do kind of a mishmash of what I do plenty throughout the week. So today um, I'm heading to Northwood Tropicals with Charmaine because Lauren and Jing are doing a joint sale together. So it's hosted by Northwood Tropicals. But Plant Happens is also going to be selling some plants. So we are going to go there and see what's for sale. I don't think I can personally buy anything because, well, you'll see. <laughs> in a future video. I, yeah, I have to save my money, but um, I thought I'd start the video here because um, I was going through my plants because, okay, start over. Uh, I started the video here because I wanted to show you some plants I pulled to possibly sell at North Tropicals because Lauren was like, oh, bring some plants and sell them. So I'm in my tent right now. I want to clear some space down at the bottom level where my seedlings are. I have seedlings that I want to get into there. I have too many forgetty eyes and I thought I'd pull some of my little dark forgetty eyes that I sold fairly recently because I have like maybe five or six left. So I pulled a few. They're going to be really cheap, but I thought I'd bring them. So this one, this one, this one I thought was really cute because it's one of the very narrow leaf ones like this is the newest leaf here all the other leaves are quite narrow and there seem to be quite a lot of excitement around anthurium so hopefully this is the third one hopefully there's gonna be someone who will love forgetty eyes as much as I do and will want to pick one up for cheap Charmaine should be on her way to my house I'm gonna drive up there it's 10 to she should be here in like 10 minutes um maybe I'll film a bit in the car I'll film a bit at the sale and then beyond that I think there's just some plant chores I want to get done this week but I don't want to say what because I don't know if like, I don't want to say I'm going to do it and then like not follow through, but um, let me just show you the room really quickly. It is like a freaking mess. That bin needs to be sorted out. All the plants need to get a home and they need to get out of there. And also like the exos, I don't know if you can see it, but they're just like, they're so messy. The plants are just, they just don't look like they're in the spot that they should be in. The Florida beauty is just... Oh my goodness, it's so big and there's just like, just doesn't look good. It doesn't look like a good display. So that's definitely something I want to get done this week is just to kind of refresh and tidy up this room and maybe do some repots. But again, I don't want to promise a repot if anything. And I want to save some repotting for like an actual repot video and answer some questions that you guys have sent me on Instagram. But yeah, by the time you see this video, I would have figured out some sort of story. So hopefully you have some plant chores with you or just some regular house chores and we can just kind of work together. Next time you see me, I should be in the car with Charmaine. So yeah, see you in a bit. Oh, you're beginning. I thought I think... you meant you're beginning the drive. Oh my God. <laughs> what the freaking heck is it, dude? What the? <laughs> Every time I put my sunglasses on, I feel a Look, it's so dirty. Welcome to the Sherman and Alvin show. Hello, everyone. Hello. I've already filmed my intro, so I don't need to tell them what we're going. But I'm like so on top of it today. Look at you. First comment on your video. I know. I was, I was like, <laughs> what the hell is she doing? <laughs> there was no views on it when I clicked on. I'm like, well, rub it in. Yeah. Why don't first, you like, it in? first comment, first view. So we're hungry. I'm mm hungry. -hmm. What are we gonna do? Okay, so it's noon. The plan today, because this evening we're going out for dinner for Jing's birthday celebration. I'm going for a hot pot. Hot pot. Hot, hot pot. My boyfriend says plop plop, so I always want to say plop plop. Plop plop. So we're gonna go to North or Tropicals. We're not gonna stay too long, although we always say that, and then we end up. We'll be just there like, for four hours. Yeah, it's just fun to hang out. I know. And then we're gonna come back. You're gonna go home, pick, pick up, up your pick Vince, up the man. and then I'll go home and pick up my G, <laughs> and then we'll meet at dinner. Oh, I brought three plants to sell. I thought you were gonna say like a granola bar. I was like, no. please don't. I wanted to bring other plants to give away. But I didn't want to like cannibalize people's sales. Oh, that's by true. Being like, oh, look at all these free plants. What did you bring? I brought just three forgetty eyes because I need to make oh, cute. space for some Amanda plants down in that tent spot. Amanda plants. What are you feeling? Oh, it's so cool. Literally anything. Just something. Like, I don't want to spend too much money. So McDonald's? Yeah. Yeah, because we're going to spend $10 million. Why is there a piece of cocoa for husk dinner? here? <laughs> Could have been worse. Just. <laughs> Was oh it trafficy coming here? Trafficy, 
garden oh. works was like pop. It was too much. I bet you people are going to Squamish for like the gross oh. grind or stuff like that. Good thing we're not participating in this event. Otherwise, we'd be very late. I know. But I'm just so happy the sun is out. I needed it. My depression needed this. It's so warm, too. It's not just it's sunny. So nice. I think, what's it? This is 14 degrees I right now. I love it. I'm so happy. My windshield is so dirty. Oh, I don't want to spray her. <laughs> oh my. She's like, so I'm wet. <laughs> okay, hopefully you don't throw up. It's, it's usually on the way back where I feel like throwing up. I don't know why. Why were you throwing up last time? Did you forget um, a pill? No, I didn't forget a pill. I just, I think I was just car sick. I but you weren't really on your phone because we put on Dateline right at the start. Actually, yeah, I felt like throwing up like the second I got in the car. I don't know why. I think what it was, was maybe too much caffeine on an empty stomach and then the socializing and then, I don't know. Because I felt fine at the event. People are gonna think you're pregnant. Trust me, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> Trust me. My oh, no, I think I think you pig. were you were on your period last time, maybe. Were you? Yeah, I was. Yeah. And I'm just always nauseous on my period. I'm filming week of this week, so I'm just gonna do little snippets of the thing, but nothing crazy. I didn't even bring my camera. I'm just gonna use my phone. Yeah, me too. Oh my gosh. Why did you turn that way? What were we talking about? I said, are your views up right now? Oh, my views. Like better than January, December. <laughs> My views are like, like oddly high right now. I that's don't know good. What well, it's it like is. it's, it's the season, right? I think so. Yeah, that's I what kind of sucks about like the plant niche is that in the winter it's just like dead. Yeah, I feel like it was good till November, and then December, January, February were kind of sad. And that's when we were like, we're gonna try so hard. We're gonna go yeah. vlog. <laughs> but it was fun. Vlogmas was fun. I don't think that counts as Vlogmas, but it's my version of Vlogmas. <laughs> I don't think I could do that. Like, where people vlog every single day. No. I, I think I'd be miserable. Yeah, you would need someone editing your videos. Yeah. I think. But I have told myself that I'm going to start wearing less makeup in my videos now. So that filming is not such a... Yeah, that's the most... Um, it's like getting The part ready. that, like, the most chory part. Mm -hmm. Like, if anything, I'll just, like, put on some, like, concealer under my eyes, some blush, and yeah. call it a day. Maybe brush my eyebrows. I can't be bothered with the freaking eyeliner and, the like, the foundation. It's just too much. And I think my skin is hating me. My skin so sucks these them. days, too. <laughs> what is it? I don't know why, but, like, every time a pimple goes away, and another, another one corrects. spreads. And they're, like, bad ones, too. Yeah. They're just not just, my like, bad one was really bad for a while but it's gone now mine was like no there was one here there was one here there was one here there's one here right what now it? it's right here i don't see anything well i just can't you see have to just get it in the shadows maybe it's like the shift in weather because it's either like stress diet yeah hormones and like all of it compacted together mm -hmm. i think we'll be happier this summer what do you think I think so. I think I think this year we're already off to a better start than last year. Yeah. I think last year we were both highly depressed. <laughs> this is our year. It is. I don't I know what that means. It's already almost April though. <laughs> See, this is what happened last year. I was like, yeah. new year, shit, it's yeah. July. But it's already so much better. No, it is for sure. I think just like mental health wise, mm -hmm. I personally have been a lot better than last What's year. What's the biggest change you've made this year? for yourself for the better I would say actually doing things that are not work related mm -hmm. like going on like my walks like without pudge just by myself listening to music mm -hmm. actually taking a lunch break wait but I kind of am a little bit concerned about the walks with your earphones and in. Do you think I'm gonna get like kidnapped or yeah. something? I know. I always yeah. think about it, but I always walk during the day. What if you use like what just one ear pod? Ear pod. I could do that. <laughs> one ear pod. No, it's so funny when I'm because I usually I wear my big mm -hmm. muffin ones, and when runners come up behind me, I'm always like, <laughs> like I get like <laughs> I legit like, get <laughs> But my mom, my mom said the same thing. She's yeah. like, you shouldn't wear those in your room. I know, because like, also I see people like walking in the trails behind my house. Their dog is off leash. They have 
earphones in on their phone, like not even watching their dog. Okay, I would never walk in like a wooded trail like that with my headphones on. But like yeah. I'm walking like literally like around our park and like around the trail. It's always in broad daylight. It's always know, but in... it's like something's happened in broad daylight. That's like, very you know? true. Like what if you get mugged? I've been mugged before. Yeah, you don't, do you want it to happen again? No. I say just wear one. I could. Fine. <laughs> You're not going to. I'm not going to, but <laughs> fine. Or I could do the thing and then just like... Put you know, you're not also on. not going to. I could. <laughs> and it's so funny because sometimes when I'm on the walks, I'm listening to like... like Dateline yeah, or date like line. A true crime. The girl was walking yeah. on a trail by it, herself. I just... It happened in broad daylight. I can't believe it. Things like this just don't happen in this neighborhood. Uh, face every time. <laughs> I definitely... I don't know why. Like, I'm just... I'm so lax around my neighborhood, but the second I leave my neighborhood, mm -hmm. like, I just think everybody is a pervert. Everybody is out to kidnap me. Yeah. Especially when I'm not wearing my contacts, when I'm, like, walking putt or something, everyone looks like a kidnapper. There's just, like, a looming shape. Mm-hmm. Because someone could sneak up on them. you so fast, like those runners. Very what if those true. runners wanted to just, like, clothesline you? It's very true. Oh. This is going to be really dark. It's going to be really dark, but... If I get kidnapped, let's say I get kidnapped, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, like, trigger warning, like a human trafficking sort of thing, right? I would be one step closer to my dream of taking down a human trafficking ring. I just <laughs> have... <laughs> okay, so I think they need to know that you're, you're like, your big move at the end, what you're going to do to the person. <laughs> <laughs> Tie um, them to the toilet. <laughs> I have this... <laughs> Device fantasy. in my front closet. It's a fantasy. Okay, if someone breaks into my house, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the top of my toilet seat, I'm gonna hide behind the the door. They come in, whap, whap them across the head. They get knocked out unconscious on the floor. Yeah. I take my device that's used for Pudge's walks. It's like this really, really long, heavy duty leash. I'm gonna wrap them around the toilet seat and like get like their crotch, like. Tie, tie their hands, <laughs> and then I'm gonna slap them awake. Wake up! Yeah. You'll see that he's attached to the toilet. I'm gonna be on TikTok. I'm gonna film him. And I'm gonna say, This is what, what happens when you break into my house, bitch. And I'm gonna embarrass him, and then I'm gonna call the police. They're gonna come in and see the man tied to my toilet, and they're gonna be like, What the wow. hell is going on here? And I'm gonna this... say, You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Not before I rob him. I'm gonna take his wallet, I'm gonna take every single piece of cash he has in there all any kind food. of gift cards <laughs> all his gift cards mine so that is my dream and also to take down a human trafficking ring like you know in the movies where it's like one girl escapes and then she just like dismantles the whole thing yeah, yeah or in real dream. life yeah but in reality that probably wouldn't happen because i'm i have no upper body strength <laughs> I have very bad vision. If a contact pops out, I'm screwed. I can't oh, no. see anything. I can't see anything. At least let me take my glasses. Wait, I need this. <laughs> this oh, is no, so my dark. This is so dark. Why are we talking about this? Can't see where we're going, guys. <laughs> I'm like blindfolded. My car is sick. I'm gonna throw up. No, I probably would throw up in the car. <laughs> What's wrong with us? Yeah, I'm so, so hungry. Back to um. Oh, yeah. yeah, so you're taking walks. So yeah, anyway, I'm taking walks. So, you know. I've been taking walks too. That's, yeah, that's good. And you have a nice little trail. The annoying thing is that now Huxley, <sighs> Huxley has learned that if he sits by the gate and like cries, then I'll take him to the forest. Oh. And up until now, I could trust him because whenever he would only cry if he needs to poo. Like, I like, yeah. like girl, I need to poo. <laughs> but one time, he didn't poo. Oh, you work the system. Yeah. You're an enabler. I know. <laughs> I also, I'm stuck because I can't be telling him that he can't communicate with me when he needs to poo, right? That's true. Like, I'm not going to listen yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, that's true. Where do you draw the line with these <laughs> yeah. teenagers? Yeah. I think the in-between is you, you don't let him, like, sniff and do stuff until he has done his business. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Oh. She ran a red light. Yeah. She ran a red light. Well, it, it was orange when I went in. Orange? It was orange. It was amber when I went through the Yellow. But slowly. Yellow. Yellow. Orange. <laughs> Where did orange come from? 
gosh, Vancouver is so pretty. I love that I live here. These mountains. It's so pretty, but it's so boring. Oh. What? What do you mean boring? This is like my dream. Like just I to be living in like a valley of mountains. It's boring to you because you grew up here. We should go on a trip. That'd be we fun. should. We've been talking about going to Tofino. Yeah, for like years. it doesn't have to be like a big trip. Just like somewhere away. Except that Tofino is just so expensive in the peak season. It is nice to be there in the summer because it's like not as hot. Yeah. But that's where it's the most busy and the most expensive. But I, I do like it in like the fall and the rainy season because it's like stormy and there's like fireplaces and stuff. I would be down for that. I'm not like trying to go to a club. True. We could go yeah. to a club. In Tofino? <laughs> Tofino. If such a club exists. I think what we should do is launch our podcast and then go on a trip to celebrate for like a little treat. Okay. Did you know that you can upload podcasts on YouTube? Did you see Does that podcast tab no. in the upload? If you like go to upload, it's like a video, oh. blah, blah, blah. And it said podcast and it said upload a podcast. Is that new? I don't know, but I, I stumbled on it yesterday. And, and like, it's just something. audio. Uh, I don't know. I didn't click or anything. It... it just said Interesting. Mm -hmm. I've been listening to a fun podcast. It's called um, Off Menu. Mm -hmm. and it's uh, two British comedians, uh, Ed Gamble and James Acaster, and then they just have guests on who are also comedians for the most part, and they just talk about like their dream like meal and what would they have for each course. Ooh. It's it's a fun fun one. I recommend it. So oh, I've also been watching a lot of Hell's Kitchen. I love Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. Gordon Ramsay is freaking unhinged, man. I know. He's absolutely <laughs> yeah. unhinged. Yeah. But he's like, I mean, he's toxic as hell, but he's funny. Like, But like, chefs are toxic. Yeah, in general. And I feel like that's just the norm for that industry. Yeah. But like, watching him on like, James Corden show, like, you know, when he's just like normal, he's just so funny. And I follow him on TikTok. Yeah, I love, I love, no, not, I don't love James Gordon. Oh, no, he's a piece of crap. Yeah, yeah, I love Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. Especially in high-end restaurants, like the kitchen culture, it's so abusive. It's mm -hmm. so awful. Like, I had a coworker, he came from Michelin restaurants, and like, what they would do to each other if they fucked up or whatever is just inhumane. Like, one guy, he received uh, a delivery and then there was like a, a case of tomatoes and then he was like just putting things away and he was like I'm gonna set this down right now and he set it on top of like a piece of equipment that was hot like an oven or something oh, no. and so all the tomatoes went just bad. went bad and then um, so they made him just stand there and they would just do all the tomatoes at him like one by one and he just had to like stand there and take it this is the kind of stuff that happens all the time this is why I left those kinds of kitchens why does it have to be like that? Yeah. Know. Like, why can't you Yeah, it's you way just... behind the times. What on earth? How is that even allowed? I would sue them. I know. No, like, like actually. Like, legally. How is that? Like, yeah, it can't how be. how is that legal? Yeah. That's terrible. But there, okay. I feel like there's just industries like that where it's just very testosterone driven and, like, you just, like, don't ask, don't tell kind of thing. Men. Yeah. You crazy men, you. <laughs> what are you guys on, man? You all just need to calm down. This traffic. I'm wow. telling you, everybody is. Maybe everyone's going to Whistler. Yeah, that's possible. It's either Whistler or Squamish. I feel like. I wonder if there's still a lot of people there. It was just like the rush in the beginning. Yeah, because Lauren was put giving away um, goodie bags. I thought she said only on Sunday. No, no, just just today. I think. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. Only today. Okay, so we're gonna look for food on the way there, and then. Um, I'll film a little bit at the event, but it's just gonna be on my phone, so I'll probably just voice over. I'm gonna shut this off now. <sighs> this traffic sucks. Okay, I'll see you at the event. Bye bye. <laughs> so here we are at North Shore Tropicals. This was like my favorite table because they had some beautiful plants, including this Jose Bono. 
And then also this Philodendron Linamii I really liked, even though I have one about the same size, but the pink on it was really nice because I can't seem to get mine to stay this pink. It pretty much hardens to green as soon as it fully unfurls. And there were a bunch of really nice mid-cut Monstera Aureas. They were really nice irrigation in the stem. A lot of them were really big and the axillary buds were all popping. They were good prices at 130. All of them were pretty much the same. I think minus one or two. And this one I was very tempted by, but I didn't get it. This one was the one I was really wanting somebody to get. I wanted Jing to get it, but she ended up picking up a top cut, but the variegation on the stem was very promising. Just um, wasn't in the budget for me today, unfortunately. And then here was some of Lauren's homegrown, like seed grown anthurium. So there was some cute little clarinarians with a little silver popping out already. Um, and also here, there was a green form Ace of Spades Cross of Magnificum. Um, she's starting to release them, but she has a lot more of them. Some crystal mags as well. And then a beautiful variegated Billetier. We were all kind of like ogling this plant because a lot of us hadn't seen one this size in person at least. And the top leaf, like it's pretty much fully hardened and it's still so pink. Um, I think somebody ended up picking this up for 1250. This one was, I think, a Meg Verde. I thought it was just really beautiful. And then a couple of Anthurium Luxuriums that I was very enamored with. This one was beautiful. I think somebody picked this up, so it was a good, good choice. And then this one I especially love because it's so beautiful and round and cup-shaped. There were a couple of these Aglonema Manila's Pride, low variegation. So you can see a little bit of white on that left leaf there. This one's a small one. And then there was a bigger one as well. I don't know how it really works with uh, variegated aglonemas if the variegation will come back. And then these are giant mama vitar foliums. Look how long that one leaf was. I was so scared it was going to get trampled. This UPI <laughs> was such a good deal. It was $100 for a top cut. It's freaking massive. And um, I could not... I could not justify getting this because I already have one, but these two leaves were giant and pristine. And then just a bunch more really nice philodendrons over here. That heterocraspidon was really nice. Another Aurea for 130. And this is Jing's table. So you see my little forgetty eyes, just little sneaky sneaks just stuck in there. Some philodendrons from Jing. Um, and if you didn't know, Jing is kind of like known as a Hoya god here locally. So she had a lot of Hoyas. This one's a Larissa. I killed mine. This next one is a, a no ID I'd never seen before. It's Kalina no ID. Archboldiana variegated. It was on my wish list, but I'm um, just not buying Hoyas right now, but it's like a really nice dusty gray variegated Hoya. This is a CV Joy Splash. Jing is kind of known for this plant because her specimen has produced a lot of really nice specimens. Hoya SP Tangamoos. I also have this one. I love it. It's just like reptilian ancient dumpster, but clean. Uh, I like this little orchid for no good reason. I just liked it. This is a philodendron white knight. Is it? Is it? Wizard? Knight? This is a, a philodendron serpents. Um, it's quite a nice dark one. Mine's not quite this dark, but I wanted to show you this alongside the next plant because look at the petioles on this plant, green and fuzzy. And then the squamacall, the petioles are fuzzy as well, but the fuzz is just a little bit shorter and pinker as well as the petiole. Just thought it'd be interesting for you to see side by side. The leaf shape is very similar though. And then, um, oh, Albo variegated Syngonium, which I hate Syngoniums, but I thought this was a nice specimen. And then here we are at Hot Pot for Jing's birthday. It was so yummy. That soup was just delicious. And the noodles, these noodles, <laughs> such good noodles. The label's about to 
one I killed in Kelapong? No. No? That's the one from Lawrence. So it's green ace oh, and men. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. It's <laughs> like, like, wow. <laughs> so complicated. <laughs> it's for my Hoya. Uh -huh. So many components. So it's actually. <laughs> so cute. Yeah. I love that. Like, so cute. I know. It's yeah. adorable. Like, I it's cute. <laughs> So as promised, we are here to do some tidying, some refreshing. It is Sunday. All I really want to do is eat popcorn and watch Hell's Kitchen, but we're here. I challenge myself. I have to do it. Here's the thing. I can sense that I've reached a point where the situation here is stressing me out. There's a whole combination of things that are stressing me out. There's pests. There's growth that's not nice because of pests. There are plants that are growing too big for the space. There's just a lot of things that just don't look quite right. And it, there's, there's also messes that need to be cleaned up. I can sense in myself that I am reaching a point with my collection, like specifically my plant room, where it's stressing me out. And if I let it get too far, I am going to shut down and shut it out of my mind, which often will result in plants dying. So we're going to try to like, do something about it before it gets to that point. So in the past, when I've let myself, you know, get to the point where I, I cut off caring for some of my plants, just so I can preserve my own sanity. I'm sure many of you have gone through this as well, where like maybe you go through a bad mental health phase and you just cannot bring yourself to think about the plants. Sometimes the plants can do that to our mental health and I really don't want to get it to that point. So this is a part of my collection, like here in my plant room that I spent the most regular time with because I do my makeup here every morning. There's really no avoiding this part of my plant collection and it's like, my favorite plants are in here because the conditions are the best like there's a grow tent here there's exos there's grow lights so i really shouldn't let it get to this point hmm, let me think so looking at this we're not going to like do a full refresh in one day but we are going to make a start we're just going to take off some critical parts of the to-do list because the way i think about it it is a very daunting task in my mind and you're gonna see what I mean in a second, hopefully. And the best way to tackle a seemingly insurmountable task is just to break it up into bite-sized manageable pieces. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, but first, I wanted to show you what I picked up at the sale. So this plant, if you went to the sale, you wouldn't have seen it because it was not for sale. <laughs> Lauren is an angel. She's been, she's been taking care of this plant for me and um, she had earmarked it for me and I'm opening it right now because it has grown a little bit since yesterday so it's pushing up against the cup. Um, we packed it like this from her shop because it was gonna go from like basically a dome, like a domed little propagation tray in transit. And I didn't want it to crisp up because this leaf is super fresh. But this here doesn't look like much but it is a green form ace of spades. So this is a cutting off of her main plant. I will pop a photo here of her plant that I took a photo of at the sale. Actually last year when she first got it, it was humongous. This is what it looked like then. It got a little bit sad for a while because it had produced babies. So she had pollinated this plant with Magnificum and she has like little seedlings growing. She sold some at the sale, but there's, there's gonna be more coming. So after that, it also, I think, got spider mites at some point. So it's a little bit smaller than it used to be, but this plant is so magnificent. I've been after this plant for so long. I've never seen one for sale and she is so kind to allow me to purchase one. So this is what it looks like now. It's a very freshly emergent leaf. As you can see from the texture, it's still got a little bit of shine to it. The velvet velvetiness hasn't come through yet and the silver hasn't even come through yet. So it is still really small and I am so excited to have this in my collection. I'm so happy. Thank you so much, Lauren. And it was not money that I was prepared to spend, but I didn't want her to be holding it on for too much longer. I feel like someone's on my roof. Sunday, why is someone on my roof? 
but it was also money that I wasn't super planning on spending yesterday. And also the dinner was so expensive. I almost threw up when I looked at the price. And actually, I threw up a little bit in my mouth when, um, no, I didn't actually throw up a bit in my mouth, but figuratively I threw up in my mouth when I was transferring money to Charmaine because she paid for the dinner. Um, so I'm gonna be eating very um, um, humbly for the next little while, but it's all worth it. The dinner was awesome. I had so much fun and now I have this plant. Personally, I think this leaf is not gonna form really well. I had to repot this in the shop because it was in like a big nursery pot and that wasn't, like we weren't gonna be able to dome that in any way to transport it, so I figured, what's less damaging, like re quickly repotting it into this cup and getting a dome on it or um, letting it crisp up in transit. So I chose this and I think the root disturbance is gonna make it not form that well. So don't be surprised if this first leaf is really ugly and I never post about it into the following leaf. But I also, I'm contemplating repotting this now. No, I won't, I'll let it, I'll let it root a little bit in here. I'll pop this into my tent very 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 happy about this i i have both forms of ace of spades now so now my only job is to not kill either of them and i'm still honestly thinking about those two monsteras the albo and the Oria, but there was just no way there's no way i could have um, justified spending money especially that kind of money on plants i honestly don't know how i used to do it in 2020 i was buying plants literally every week and they were so much more expensive back then and i don't even feel like i'm spending more now post pandemic than i was pre-pandemic because like we weren't going out then but i'm not really going out much now either like i'm going out for meals every now and then but i just don't get it i'm not traveling Where's all my money going? With the state of my bank account, I can't really spend money on, on plants, especially plants like Monsteras, which I am i don't have the best track record with Monsteras. And if anyone can revert a Monstera, that person would be me. So I'm kind of waffling on a little bit because I'm kind of dreading getting started, but the plan for today, let me pick you up and show you what we're working on. Okay, so at a glance, it doesn't look totally horrible. I mean, I guess it depends on who you ask, but it is a mess. So if we get a little bit closer, I'll show you all the things that is bothering me right now. So kind of all over the place, we have, I mean, that plant doesn't need to be there. That plant's not supposed to be there. I got a box. This plant doesn't need to be there. Random, like this was uh, purchased, I don't even know, a couple weeks ago? I haven't put that away yet. I have like, yeah, I have a spray there over here, just random dead plant. So to tackle that, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a bin and we're going to put all the stuff that does not belong here in here. And we're gonna take it downstairs and we're gonna deal with it. So like this crap. This is from a repot, I don't even remember which one, but this is like pond I need to rinse out. Empty pots I need to rinse out. Plant tags I can reuse. Another dead plant, I really don't wanna talk about this one. <sighs> I, I'm still, okay, so this is, this is, you can see the tag. My freaking red beauty from Amanda. She knows about it. I am absolutely, devastated that that plant's dead but it's dead pop this one in here well like the stuff that's not garbage i'll also put in here like let's put this in here oh no it's clean though what are we gonna do let's put the dirty stuff in here clean stuff on the side this plant is staying in here but this box needs to go this needs a rinse so i'll put that like this we'll keep adding to this but this is going to go downstairs and that'll be dealt with and i just have like random pieces of plant like this <laughs> this is garbage i was keeping it to show you guys this is um the failed aborted inflorescence infructescence of my crystallinum or crystal mag thing the one it's right there right where my finger is this one i had pollinated with politiflorum and it was it was pregnant it was 
turning green, it was starting to protrude and then it aborted, which is, I think, most people's experience with trying to pollinate politiflorum, especially with something that's not politiflorum. So I kept this to show you guys um, that it was a failed, failed uh, pollination, but now that I've shown you, I can throw it out. So in my exos, I have also just random, like dead leaves. This, oh, oh, this is an inexplicable fallen leaf from my UPI, which I feel like my UPI is not getting in, oh, there you go. My UPI is not getting enough light because this leaf fell off. It was pristine, it was green, there was no yellow on it. It had just been sitting there browning for the last while. And I couldn't figure it out because the roots look good and also the following leaf continued to grow. So I think I need to get that one out. What's really stressing me out is <sighs> this does not look good, right? I mean, the plants are healthy, but this does not look good. It bothers me so much, but I don't know where to put this Florida beauty because like the conditions are so good for it in there, but like that is taking up the whole thing and it just doesn't look nice anymore. So that bothers me. I, this one is quite empty. This one could definitely use some plants and they all need like a clean at the bottom. A lot of stuff just needs to move around and be displayed a little bit better. But my problem with the Florida Beauty is that I don't have a spot for it because I want to give it good conditions and good light. But this freaking Florida ghost takes up so much space because this would be the spot I would put it in, right? And here is one thing we definitely need to work on today. This bin, some plants need to come out, but right now this bin needs to stay here because if I move it, Oh no, it's not going to do it right now because I just watered this plant. But when this when this soil gets a little bit dry, this whole plant topples over. So we are going to repot this into something bigger. I've been meaning to do it for a really long time now. I don't have a pot big enough. What I wanted to get was like a really, really giant glass vessel, which I can't find. I think it has to be like something huge for, that people use for like candles or like, you know, like big branches and stuff. That's the kind of vessel that, that would fit this plant. Unfortunately, I don't have anything quite big enough, but I do have a pot that's slightly bigger that we're gonna repot this in and just get it a little bit more stable so it's not always falling over because it is so, so top heavy. So that's a repot we need to do. And then maybe we'll just grab a couple more. But the main thing I wanna get done today is get rid of all the crap, repot this guy, do a bit of tidying. So I have this cart from Ikea. This cart I've had forever. And did you know they started to make this lid for it? It's so good. I think I could use this for like repotting small plants and stuff, like, or like filming repots. But down here, I have a lot of crap that I don't use, but I've just been like saving for no reason, which I can actually be using for plant stuff because um, I was motivated by Charmaine's plant cart video I've been meaning to do it for so long, so I think today will be the day we start it. I feel like that's a good amount of work for me to do. Right now it is 4.21. I think I want to start making dinner around about 5, 5.30. So I want to do like an hour of work in here. So my thinking is that this week I'm going to just film bits and pieces here and there just to break it up again into like manageable size chunks. I don't quite have the time and dedication that Charmaine does to do a week of plant to do's like every month, but I can do like a mishmash like this every now and then. And I think kind of break things up. And if you guys like longer videos, which I know a lot of you do, this is my way of trying to, you know, make something that, that fills that want, that need. So yeah, I'm definitely not going to get everything done today that I want to get done, but once I kind of start chipping away at it, it's going to be less daunting. I feel like we should start with the repot of the Florida Beauty, not the Florida Beauty, the Florida Ghost, because that's going to make a mess and I don't want to start cleaning before I make a mess. And then I might as well repot any other soil plants right now because I have like my soil here. We're just going to see how the day goes because things might just like pop out at me as we go through things. I wish I knew how to light myself so I don't have like reflection from my glasses. Anyways, we're gonna do this on the floor. Let me show you the plant really quickly without it toppling over. So this plant is getting absolutely massive. 
It's in a, I think it's an eight inch pot and it's only supported by a bamboo stick. And this is proof that sometimes plants just want the support in order to size up. This is the newest leaf right here. It's still not super ghosty, but it is a little minty. I know the thing to do with Florida ghosts is to give them more light to induce more white, but so far that hasn't worked for me. So this plant used to live in my tent. It was under Barina lights and it was so close to the lights that it burned the crispy parts. Well, this one snapped a little bit, but this one got all burnt like here. You see these dots? These are from the Barina lights. It was really, really close and it wasn't producing white. And then I moved it here and it's getting mother lights, which are much stronger. They are 32 watts. There's two of them kind of close to it. And it's increasing, but it's not really white either. This is about the extent of it, but I still love it nonetheless. It's growing really well and it grows really fast. But look at, look at the size of the stem down here and then look at it up here. So, um, support is definitely needed. I almost feel like I need an additional support, but I'm not going to worry about that now because I don't plan on putting this on a moss pole. I'm just going to put more like bamboo like things around it. If you will balance there for a second, my friend, um, we're going to repot this again on the floor into this which is not my favorite choice, but it's a bigger pot. Like I said, I wanted basically a giant glass vessel, which is basically like a boat sized glass vessel, but I haven't been able to find one. And um, I went to Valley Village last week and I was only able to find little small ones and those glass vessels are so much more expensive now than they used to be, which made me mad, but I shouldn't have spent the money on like overpriced glass vessels, but they are still a little bit cheaper than I would spend if it was like full price brand new retail. Um, I, I don't know how I'm gonna frame this so you can see everything. All right, so this is not the best angle I could possibly give you, but it's an angle. Someone left a comment on a recent video, like saying like, what are we gonna do when we need to like get machetes to chop our way through our forests because our plants are getting too big. And I felt that so hard, like, all we're trying to do is grow our plants big, but when they get too big, we freak out, which is what's happening right now. And I I was having this conversation with Charmaine yesterday and um, we were talking about like, what are we gonna do about our plants? Cause it's stressing us out. Then we're like trying to basically think about Amanda's setup and she has giant plants and like, how is she managing to grow them in her space? And she, she talks all the time about how she, She's stressed about how big her plants are, but they're able to grow. They're not confined by little spaces. So we're trying to like rack our brains on how we can reconfigure our setups to allow for big plants. Cause right now we don't have that, but that's a topic for another day. Right, so it's in soil. We're gonna get it into soil, which I just mixed, but it is going to be a denser mix. So in the last like year or so, I've been preferring um, a denser, less chunky soil mix than I used to, like let's say like two, three years ago. This is working well for me and my watering habits, my lighting conditions under my grow lights. I'm not like a heavy underwater these days. I used to be last year when I was like peak busy. Right now I'm just kind of like slightly behind on my watering. So this, soil mix is a little bit less chunky than what it was potted in which is good for that plant because that plant dries out like every three to four days but of course like that pot is too small for it but still um so this one is mainly the um pro mix the myco soil which i bought a huge bag of it like two years ago i'm still working through it it already has a lot of this like fine perlite in it and then I added, um, what did I add? I added worm castings, a bit of biochar, which I don't have a huge opinion on biochar right now, but I thought I'd add it. Fur bark, so the reptile bark fur bark, coarse perlite, and like the really big asteroid sized perlite, that really spongy perlite. It's like, well, you're not gonna see it because it's covered in soil, but they're like this size and they're a little bit more 
um, yeah, spongy. It's not my favorite to use with like my pond mix, so I've just been trying to use it up in my soil. And I think that's it. And like normally when I have like Leca that I don't want to sanitize, pond I don't want to sanitize, I just like chuck it in here as well. <sighs> I like how I brought this bowl, like it's gonna hold anything. I want to get a good amount of the soil off of this. I haven't repotted a plant this big in I don't remember how long come out. This plant is like covered in EFN, so it's super sticky. Oh, okay, there we go. Where should I put you here? The roots are pretty full, but it's not like crazy root bound or anything, but I am gonna loosen this up. This poor plant, this poor stem at the bottom is just doing everything you can to hold this plant up. You know what? We're just gonna loosen the bottom. We're not gonna loosen the whole root ball. Maybe we're not even gonna loosen the bottom because I just cannot be bothered and I don't think this plant really cares. You know what? We're gonna leave it like this and then we're gonna plop it in here with one hand. Oh, by the way, this is a Elho pot. This, like, I don't know how big it is, but I got this a while ago from Vandula. If you are in um, Vancouver, Vandula Farms. And I just have not found the right plant to use this with. run downstairs and get one more bamboo. I can just balance you like right there. <sighs> be right back, be right back. Okay, I'm back and I did not find a bamboo stake, but I did find this plank. How I got this plank, I have no idea. This must have, what did it come with? Why do I have this plank? I don't remember, but I figure this will be a little bit more stable than um, a bamboo stake. I mean, though, I'm not a huge fan of planks in terms of like looks, but I also don't like plants that lean. So we're gonna pick one problem to solve and that's gonna be the leaning. And we're gonna shove you here and I think that could be better. Oh, these Velcros are too short. Oh my gosh, don't snap, don't snap. This poor stem. Okay, we're gonna do like, we're gonna use black Velcro and then it doesn't need to be this thick. So I'm just gonna slice it down the middle and make two straps out of it. And first we shall secure the top. I wish you guys could see how much sap is coming off of my hands. And then we're gonna do somewhere around here. Yeah, okay, that's more stable. Does it look better? Probably. Can you see it? I don't think so. But that's already standing up straight, so I love that for me. Let's fill her up. So I am super excited for April and just like some planty stuff that are coming up. So um, when we were at the shop, Lauren and I and Charmaine were talking about, so you know the Burly Marks flames that I was talking about in my Monstera video, my Monstera collection video. So that pre-order is going to be arriving to Lauren within the next couple of weeks. So me and Charmaine put our hands up and said, can we help you unpack? and prep the plants because um, if you didn't know or if you didn't watch that video, I mentioned that uh, Lauren is going to be holding these plants back for two weeks just to kind of soften the blow of the acclimation process because as pre-orders go, they can be really risky for the buyer. And that's one reason why I, I never participate in pre-orders because first of all, the person doing the pre-order, like the person that is like in contact with the the, the exporter 
they don't necessarily care if your plant survives or not and they're going to mark up the plant from what they're paying just because they're the one organizing it which is fair but if you get a dead plant you don't necessarily like it's just a little bit more risky like i would much prefer finding my own seller and or importing it myself without paying that extra markup so that's one reason why i've never i never participate in pre-orders but this one um lauren is going to be holding the plant back for two weeks or longer if needed to to get them like started at least or just make sure that they're not going to just die and maybe diagnose some like initial critical issues that she might identify so i really wanted to help with that i think charmaine did as well so that's what we're gonna do when they arrive and i cannot wait i don't know when it's gonna be but it's gonna be sometime in the next uh, what day is it sometime in the next two weeks i think and then hopefully we can get that filmed either for my channel charmaine's channel probably for lauren's channel Lauren is too busy to film, so I feel like she needs a little bit of an extra hand. Other stuff that's happening is me and Charmaine are planning, we're planning to do kind of more different content than we're normally doing. Um, it's really hard sometimes to film the kinds of videos that we want to film without this leaf, without the help of somebody else. So it's not just enough to have someone film us, but we also kind of need someone to help us film that kind of understands plans because they need to understand what to capture like as a camera person or like anyone who's helping with the production so one thing we want to do this year is just to make more variety of content and i don't want to spoil what we're trying to do because i'm really excited about it but i don't want to you know set anything up and disappoint anyone if it doesn't go according to plan but we are hoping to just to create more content and of course we're always talking about a podcast it really depends on how this year pans out for me in terms of how busy i am with work but the podcast is still in our our to-do list i'm sorry this is like the worst angle ever but i'm not going to be able to repot this properly and show you at the same time so i'll show you at the end what it looks like Okay, so I'm wiggling this around and that steak is not really moving much, so that's great. I think this one is now done. So I'll just flip it around to show you. What I'd like for this to do is I need this leaf to come down and just, just calm down a little bit. Let me move this back to its spot. Yeah, no, you can't see anything. Okay, let me show you, ow, ow. So here's what it looks like now from my perspective. I don't love, what is this leaf? Uh, I don't love opaque pots, but I do like how this pot looks. I think clear pots is just such a security blanket for me that like I feel like I always need it to understand like the moisture levels in the substrate, but I think I know this plant well enough. I've had it for like three years now, so I think I'm comfortable with this. I mean, obviously I know how to check moisture levels in soil, but I would like to be able to check it just by looking at it without having to touch it, but you know, it's okay. This is so much better for it. And let me just show you this plank. So it's like a little bit wobbly, but not nearly as wobbly as the stake, like the bamboo stake. And you can see right now it's able to stand straight up, which is so much better. Now looking at it, like I'm not a huge fan of planks, but it's so small in comparison to the plank, plank, it's so small, the plank is so small, is, <laughs> what am I saying, the plank is so much smaller than the plant itself, that like, this is no more intrusive than a moss pole, right, so actually I don't mind it at all, and um, I just have to decide if I want to keep this here or not, because at some point the Florida Beauty needs to go somewhere and it probably should go here where there's like good light and stuff. But for now, well for today at least, it's gonna go here. And then another repot I need to do, my little bin of garbage is getting really full. Another repot I need to do is um, just a random one I've just been meaning to do for so long, but I've been putting it off for God knows why. 
Does anyone remember this plant from one of my Christmas videos? This is my Ficus Shiveriana, which I've watered yesterday, so that's why it's like soaking wet. I need to repot this. It's still in its nursery pot. Um, it's been doing okay, um, if anyone's wondering. It hasn't grown a ton. It's grown like a leaf or two in that time. I started repotting this and I don't even have a vessel for it which I'm gonna have to go grab downstairs. I'm looking at these roots and there's not a lot of it but they look pretty healthy. Here is what the roots look like. Look at this tiny little plant. It's so cute. I think I want to put it into like a glass vessel and no drainage. I think I'll keep it in soil and then I'll grow this downstairs like on my living room shelf which has stronger lights. I think this probably wants more light. Oh, but then I have mealy bugs down there. You know what? Let's repot him. Whichever place I put him is not gonna change what substrate I use. So let's go grab a glass vessel and why did not prepare for this repot? She's back. This is not a beverage. This is micro water, which I mixed downstairs. This is just great white mixed in water, dissolved in water. I decided to go for this. So this is like, I think I got this from Valley Village fairly recently. It was like a set of, uh, I don't know, four or five, six for like five bucks. And it's like basically for tea lights. I'm excited to see what ends up in the thrift stores after this like wedding season, this spring summer, because oftentimes a lot of this glass stuff comes from weddings. And I also have a LECA layer at the bottom, which is, I decided to use black LECA. I thought that'd be cute. Can you see, you can't see anything. I honestly don't know why it took me so long to repot this. I was really only meaning to like quarantine it for like, I don't know, two weeks, three weeks, and then get it repot into my soil. And it passed quarantine, there are no pests on it, which is kind of a miracle considering it came from a nursery that often has pests. I guess I can say the same of every garden center right now, like whether it be, I don't know, whether it be a plant focused one or if it's like a hardware store, they all, kind of get their stock from the same uh, growers. There are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of thrips and mealybugs and spider mites right now. And I'm still trying to rack my brain on like where I got the mealybugs. No, not the mealybugs, the spider mites. Because in all my years of growing plants, I've never, never had spider mites until about summer of last year. And I kind of always just attribute it to the fact that like I live in a forest where it's kind of um, a little bit more humid and there's a lot of, I'm assuming more predatory bugs. Like I honestly, I cannot tell you how many spiders live in my house. So I always chalk it up to the fact that I have spiders in my house um, and they seem to be kind of all over the place and that might be why I never really had to deal with pests, but this has been a really bad year for pests for me and spider mites. I didn't used to fear them because I didn't think they were that bad or like I was like, oh, how bad could they be? You could just get some miticide and they'll be gone. But this is the battle that I've been fighting for a while. And I feel like I've just kind of been keeping them at a manageable level, but I've never been able to eradicate the spider mites. So one thing we're trying to do now um, is up the beneficial, um, the predatory mites. So biological pest management hasn't been um, something I've been using religiously in the past year or two because my thinking was like, if I'm gonna use systemic, I don't wanna waste my money and just kill the beneficials that way. But the systemics aren't, aren't working right now. Oh, they're not really like fully working. I don't remember which mite it was, I kind of just left that up to Jing, um, but Jing placed an order and then I'm going to release some into my tent and I'll try a little bit out here. I just don't think that the conditions are humid or warm enough to activate them, but I'll try a little bit because out here is where it's actually a problem, but I really want to make sure that the tent doesn't get spider mites because that would just be the worst. Like my most precious plants are in there. So I'm just going to water it 
lightly with this great white water. And if you're not doing this for transplanting, I highly recommend it because in my experience, and it's about a year since I started using great white, um, this step really has helped a lot with transplant shock. It just makes them kind of start growing and um, get established a little bit quicker. I think that should be about good. Yay, it's finally repot. It looks so cute. Aww. I don't even really want this plant to grow big. Not that I think I can grow this plant big because I'm not great with ficus, but I feel like under the monial slates it can do okay. But once it gets too big for those monial slates, like it gets too big for that shelf, I don't think I can give it great light conditions, but I am more than happy to maintain it at this size. <laughs> it's so cute, so cute. Okay, that's all the repotting we're gonna do today. So what I really wanna do is I wanna go through this shelf here and then just get rid of crap that doesn't belong here and then the same for these two exos here and maybe just like do a like vacuum so what i think i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just set you up on a tripod and then we're just gonna time lapse some tidying and i think that's gonna be it for today because i still want to enjoy the rest of my sunday afternoon
made the decision to take the Florida Beauty out, even though I'm in my heart, I'm not ready to grow it outside, but I needed to take it out anyways because I showed you where the moss needs to be added to the moss pole. I know I'm gonna need to cut that plant at some point. It's just like that top part of the plant is not gonna root if there's no moss in there. So I need to get that kind of air layering process going. So I took it out. I'm gonna moss it off camera later. And I'm just gonna kind of fill this exo back up with other plants. Plants that aren't going to take up so much space, at least not in the present time. So I'm gonna start filling it back up and I'll show you what it looks like at the end. So it definitely still needs some work and I didn't even do like a full deep clean I only vacuumed so I didn't do my usual like glass cleaning but it's better than before this is all I have the energy for right now and then Patricia <laughs> Patricia needs needs she needs some help like this leaf needs to turn around but I kind of want to get it on a pole so it can kind of grow upright but look how beautiful I can't believe how big this leaf is it's so nice minus the like EFN spots. I believe that's EFN. But now she actually has room to move and I'm actually liking this a lot better without the Florida Beauty in it. It doesn't really need the humidity anyways. I just don't have a like a well-lit spot for it yet. But honestly, I feel like it can just live next to the Florida Ghost for the time being. So I'm just gonna kind of put everything back in its normal spot and we're gonna call it a day. I totally forgot that I was gonna do this plant card today, but it's time for dinner. I need to go make dinner, so it's gonna be for another day. So what's left on the roster is plant card. Florida Beauty needs more moss in its pole, which I might actually do off camera. Hopefully next time you see me, um, we're gonna get some more work done. And then um, at the end, hopefully we'll be able to see some results. But I'm feeling good. At least the floor is tidy. At least the garbage is out of the room. I'll deal with that off camera later after dinner. But I feel good about the productivity today. And I feel like I'm just kind of more in my head because this is almost kind of like a Tetris situation. Because like some things can't be moved certain places because it's like got spider mites or it's around spider mite stuff. So I don't want to put a spider mitey or a spider mite exposed plant into my tent for example so there's all these things i'm trying to like work out in my head of how to move things around overall i'm just really excited that the florida ghost is standing up right now all right so um that's it for today i will see you back here maybe tomorrow so it is like a week later like five days have passed and um I didn't film and I have a valid reason for it. I quit my job and yesterday was my last day. Um, I've had this job for nine years in an industry I've been in for 15 years and the time had come for me to leave. So this past week and really the last two weeks have been a lot of like wrapping up projects, handing over things and it, it wasn't the best decision for me to make like a promise that I'd be filming all through this week because Realistically, I was not going to be able to do it. I really just came on here to kind of wrap things up. Um, I, I was telling Charmaine that like I was I was stressing because I had so much more to film and like the week was almost over. And she was like, why don't you just split it into two parts? <laughs> which was like the best idea ever, which is why she's like my unofficial agent. So we're splitting this project into two parts. I'll pick this up in another video. We're gonna work on more of like a refresh of this room. I still need to do like an actual clean of the exos. I also have to do that plant cart, which I haven't touched. Um, I haven't like put all my supplies onto that cart yet. So that's all coming up in a future video. I don't know if it'll be the next one. Um, 
I feel like next week's video I mean, I have so many ideas in my head, but it is definitely coming up in the next couple of weeks. So I wanted to jump on here to show you a couple of things that I did off camera because I said I was going to do it. And well, just because I'm pretty happy with how one of these repots turned out. So you might've noticed behind me already, my Florida beauty now lives here next to my Florida ghost. So these two big boys are now next to each other. So it's not gonna be like this forever because they're, they're really big. So it's not gonna be long before they kind of outgrow this space even because they're kind of competing for this space. But for now, the light is good, they're growing well, and I'm pretty happy to have this here. So the Florida Beauty now is facing kind of the light in front of it and it's looking really good. This leaf has finally turned around here, this newest leaf. It was kind of like upside down and like curving all around. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. I also built up the moss on the moss pole so that this part of the stem can then root, but at least that will give me the option to chop it when the time comes. And the other repot I wanted to show you was this Patricia. So I wasn't actually planning on repotting it that night, but then it was bothering me so much the way that it was kind of like leaning all to one side. I'll pop in the footage here just so you can see how crooked it was growing because the stem wasn't supported by a pole, so it was kind of like curving around looking for a place to grow. The other problem was that the pot was getting too small. The Patricia I find to be a very thirsty plant so it would dry out very quickly. So I put it into no drainage. It is now on a moss pole in a denser soil like the same soil mix that I potted the Florida Ghost and it has a bit of a like a black like a layer at the bottom just to kind of give me a little bit buffer when if I end up overwatering this plant or like putting too much water into the pot. And then this pole is one of Lauren's um, super lazy moss poles, which I love so much. It's the super clear one. And I have tree fern fiber with like um, a lot of perlite and some of my pond mix mixed into there. So tree fern fiber poles aren't my favorite. I mean, I love them. I love making tree fern fiber poles, but they're not my favorite to make because tree fern fiber is so expensive for me. I mean, it's expensive in the States as well, but not quite as, as expensive as in Canada. For those of you in New Zealand, I think you guys think it's expensive, but it's like expensive here. So while I don't love using it because it's not very cost effective, but it's so much easier to rehydrate a tree fern fiber pole because tree fern fiber doesn't get hydrophobic the way that moss does. So you can actually get water to run through the middle of it if it fully dries out. So yeah, that's what it's in. I didn't fill it very high because again, I wanted to kind of save on the tree fern fiber. And then, so this leaf was kind of curving this way because if you can see the stem was trying to grow this way. So what I ended up doing was I just took one of these S hooks that I used to like hang plants. And then I just like hooked this onto the poles just to keep this leaf this way so that hopefully it will guide the stem kind of back this way. So it's kind of like, kind of like bonsaiing in a way. <laughs> so I am thrilled with how this now looks. It looks so much better than it did before. And now it's like standing upright. It's so much easier to water without the drainage. And it just, yeah, I think it'll be much happier. And I think these little like freckles, these little like neon freckles, um, like I said, I think they're just, well, I mean, I can see that they correspond with the EFN spots where like the EFN we produced. So I think that it will kind of go away for the most part as the leaf hardens and darkens. I don't know if it's like a sign of something bad because previous leaves have not had so much of these like neon spots. But if you grow like philodendron dean McDowell, um, Pasta Zanum, who else does this? Those are the only two that come to mind. But those two plants tend to have these like bright spots where the EFN is and it doesn't seem to be like indicative of a deeper problem. So fingers crossed, I think that's what is on my Patricia. I can't believe how big it's growing. I just love it so much. I think that this is probably my favorite longleaf philodendron. I think. At least right now, like at least the ones I have in my collection, this is my favorite. I think it edges out the heterocraspidons just a tiny bit for me because like I find it so much easier to grow than hetero. All of hetero is starting to catch up. So yeah, um, wanted to show you this and just this little trick. Um, I've been kind of more into like 
tying plants up and um, kind of shaping the way they grow using strings and things like that because um, Amanda does this a lot with her plants. Actually, she doesn't grow any of her climbing philodendrons that I've seen with moss poles. She just like ties them to things using like suede string and they're growing freaking massively and they're not rooting into like a moss pole or anything. And not that like I would have the means to do that because I don't think I have as many places to like tie things, but I'm definitely trying to like incorporate these little little nifty MacGyvery things into my plant care just to kind of get things a bit more contained because if anyone can be copied when it comes to like working plants, like big plants into confined spaces, um, I think Amanda is a good resource for that. So yeah, really that is all I wanted to come on here to say is just to kind of close this video off. It is Saturday night and this video is going up tomorrow morning so I still have to edit and finish off this video. So just keeping it short. Um, and I also, I wanted to kind of semi-announce, it's not even really an announcement, like who do I think I am? I quit my job and I feel like I kind of wanted to bury it into the end of this video just because I didn't want to be like uh, making a huge deal about it right now because I'm not really super ready to make a video on it, but I do want to because workplace reform, workplace culture, um, all of that has been a pretty hot topic right now and I definitely want to be part of the discussion because I've made this decision for my personal well-being and from my personal experience I think it would be helpful to like discuss these things because I think a lot of people must be going through a lot of the same things so all of that to say I have a lot of like I have a lot of like emotions surrounding this whole thing. I haven't even fully processed it yet because it happened really quickly. I made a decision, I mean like very quickly to put in my notice, but this decision has been kind of building inside me for at least a year, maybe two years now. So I'm not in the right frame of mind to really gather my thoughts in a structured way. So I would love your help to um, help me structure this video a little bit more. What I'd like to do is maybe like a repot and discuss kind of like the context surrounding my departure, why I did things the way I did, what I'm going to do next, and um, I would love your help in kind of asking me questions regarding that. And I will also put this up on my Instagram so you can respond to that as well if you follow me on Instagram. But yeah, um, that video will also be coming up soon once I feel like I'm ready to kind of talk about it in a, in a way that I feel is like helpful. <laughs> in a broader sense and it's not it's just not me like using YouTube <laughs> as like a therapist because I don't want it to be like that so um, if you have any suggestions on like what to talk about or any questions feel free to leave it in the comments or DM me but actually no don't DM me because that might get lost in my DMs just either leave it in the comments here or when I put it in my stories as a question box leave it there so that is all I have for this week sorry it kind of like got a little bit weird with the structure and I didn't intend on cutting this into two parts but that's the way the cookie crumbled this week so thank you guys so much for watching this fairly long video I hope you got some chores done while watching this video and thank you always for bearing with me and just like my general lack of organization if you enjoyed this video please remember to give it a like I hope you have a great rest of your weekend I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one Mwah.